Hello, everyone. My name is Samantha Coolish Fargione. I am from the Weston Historical Society. I'm the executive director, uh, and I'm also the programs coordinator for the Norwalk Historical Society as well. Um, and I see the Norwalk Historical Society's executive director, Diane Jellaret. Hey, Diane. There she is. And the both of us are very excited to welcome everyone to tonight's presentation, Classic Cars, the History of the James Melton Museum, as this topic connects both Weston and Norwalk. So our guest presenter is tonight is John J. O'Leary. He is an adjunct, adjunct faculty member at the University of Hartford and Post University. Uh, John O'Leary has taught a wide variety of courses in business, economics, strategy, and international business at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. He has worked on a variety of projects around the globe in cities like Prague, Singapore, Bangkok, and Dubai for companies such as Pratt & Whitney, Otis Elevator, and Prague Studios. O'Leary has an active research agenda exploring topics related, relating to the history of the automobile, including the famed restorer Gustav Reuter, Reuter Coachworks in the Bronx, New York. Um, noted antique car collector James Melton, which we'll be hearing about tonight as well as the saga of the 1939 Mercedes-Benz 540K from World War II. As an archivist for Reuters Coachworks, John O'Leary provides answers to questions for private individuals and has contributed assistance in research to companies for investment quality automobiles in the global automotive scene. So I am gonna turn the presentation over to John. Thanks, Samantha. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for being here. Uh, I'm John O'Leary. Um, the first slide you've got in front of you uh, is the uh, travel decal for the state of Connecticut. Now, I grew up in Connecticut. I'm actually from Glastonbury. Um, so I know several of the places on this map. You know, we've got Yale, we've got the sub base in Groton. Uh, but what I didn't know was down here on the left, the Melton Museum. Wasn't on my uh, radar, uh, not something I grew up with, not something I found a lot of information on. Uh, it wasn't until I met my wife um, and the connection that I have to her family um, and her family in turn with Melton. Um, so it's uh, Gus Reuter um, was uh, the proprietor of Reuter's Coachworks in the Bronx. Uh, in addition to Melton, his clients included Henry Austin Clark from the Long Island Auto Museum, uh, Dr. Sam Shear, uh, noted uh, uh, racer and yachtsman Briggs Cunningham, David Tunick, as well as two former presidents. Uh, Gus did work for FDR's Packard 12, uh, as well as Woodrow Wilson's Pierce Arrow that's still in the museum uh, down in Virginia. What you're looking at here is an old tax photo. Uh, in 1940, uh, New York City took uh, photos of every business and residence uh, for tax purposes. Um, and you'll see it looks what looks like snow is its old cellophane film. So it's actually unfortunately deteriorating. Um, but the city's in the process of um, archiving these. I mean, I actually found it and it's in a quality shot. I mean, you see the front of the garage, you can still read the Reuters Coachworks. Um, it's just an incredible piece uh, that I was able to locate. Um, a lot of cars that Gus would have worked on would have this restored by Reuters Coachworks tag. Um, you'll see a lot of these when they come up for auction at Sotheby's and some of the auction houses. You'll also see them uh, from, muse uh, from museums from California uh, up to Maine. Um, now this is him, this is Gus Sr. Uh, he's known as, he was known as the Dean or the uh, Stradivarius of Automobile Restoration. Um, Again, he had a strong connection with Melton, which I'll get into. Um, and in fact, Melton even quotes uh, or names Gus by name in, in, the, in the, his book, uh, Bright Wheels Rolling. Uh, he says, indeed, there are a few professionals who can do diamond pleating as it was done in 1910, or paint a car so that you can look right down into the finish and not see bubbles, orange peel, or scratches. Gus Reuter of New York does this work better than, than anyone I know. So, you know, ultimate form of praise there when he's mentioned uh, by name in, in the book. Um, I have several copies of that book, um, uh, several different autographs. Um, I'm not sure if Margo herself signed this, but I have one of the books uh, that I have in my possession. I might have been signed by her when she was younger, who knows, uh, but I thought I'd include that as well. Um, this is what Melton might have seen, um, a business card of Gus's uh, from years ago. Uh, unsure if he got it, uh, 
but this is what uh, would have been given to, uh, to Melton by Gus. Um, the, uh, the, the coach works itself still is around, still in the Bronx. Uh, it's a different business in the front, but the apartments behind where uh, the Reuters lived is still there, which is kind of neat. Um, there's a famous story that uh, Margaret writes in her book, she was always wondering where her father was on Christmas Eve. Well, it turns out he was down in the Bronx with Gus, having a drink or singing uh, uh, Christmas songs to the family. My father-in-law, uh, Richard Reuter, actually still vi vividly remembers uh, Milton singing to him when he was younger and just thought that was normal. You know, you'd have this award-winning opera singer singing to you on Christmas Eve. That, that happened to everyone, right? Um, so just a unique piece and connection that uh, the writers had uh, to Milton. Um, I've been uh, fortunate that the, the writer family has turned over all the, uh, their basically archives to me and let me go through everything. Um, I actually have a copy of the Milton Museum booklet signed by, uh, by Jim that he would, would have sent to several close friends. Um, it was a, uh, not something that was sold, it was something that was made and given to him. Um, but he revered Gus so much, he would send him awards. This is actually the, uh, it was the TV Guide Award for Vocalist of the Year from 51. Um, he also sent Milton the, uh, I mean, sent Gus outstanding uh, performance, something he got uh, at the Motorsport Show in 52. It's kind of hard to read the faded part, uh, but that was at the Grand Central Palace uh, in New York. Here's a picture of uh, the Grand Central Palace. So for those of you who don't know, you know who is this? Who is this Jimmy Melton fellow? Um, it's kind of uh, difficult to explain who he is to maybe some younger uh, people. Um, the only person I could think I could make an honest comparison with is Frank Sinatra. Um, again, Melton was a singer. He was an actor. Um, he was, you know, beyond famous uh, before you know the, C the CD era that I grew up in, uh, or this, this digital era. You know, was radio was the king, and he was everywhere. So this is a 19, I believe, 27 photo of him. Um, because you know, he was caricatured. You know, you've made it when you've got you know people caricaturing you uh, in newspapers uh, and in booklets. Uh, another press photo of his, uh, you know, it, it, during his days in Hollywood. Um, let's see, you know, if he had unfortunately if he had lived a little longer, um, I think he could have done something like what Rod Stewart did a few years ago, where you know, I uh, came up with a great American songbook. You know, I think some of Milton's songs are incredible. Uh, his voice was just so unique. That if he, you know, uh, could have just sung anything, I would could have sang the phone book. I, I would have listened to it. Um, so you see another photo of him in uh, California um, during his Hollywood days. Um, again, he's on the RCA label. He's just he's everywhere. There's it's it's you know kind of hard to uh, to put him in the context kind of today because there's that not that one per person that's as famous you know especially with the internet. Um, but the way his vo vocal styles, I really enjoy. You know, he actually sang uh, his version of. Uh, Beyond the Sea from, that came out in 52. I actually think it's better than Bobby Darren's. I know Bobby Darren had the, uh, the famous hit with it in 58, but I think his is actually better. Uh, but I know I'm a little biased on that one. Um, you know, again, he's all over the radio. He's on CBS, he's on NBC, he's got the telephone hour in 1940. He's on the Texaco Star Theater in 44. Uh, he's got the Harvest of Stars in 45. Um, you know, one of the, the stories I, I've heard is that, you know, he he gives up the Texco Star Theater to Milton Berle on honor because you know his concert schedule is so busy he can't make the commitments for uh, the Texco Star Theater so Milton Berle winds up taking it over and then he becomes uh, famous for that show. Um, but again Milton's everywhere this is an old letterhead I found uh, it says tune in every, every Sunday night the Texco Star Theater and you see his caricature singing so it's not just in, in print and in singing he's on it's on letterhead and he's on you know mailings and things. A um, couple of old uh, ephemera items I've been able to track down, uh, old CBS radio tickets of his. Uh, again, these were not for sale. These were given out, never meant to be kept, but someone did, fortunately. Um, another one from, uh, this is 49. Uh, now, but he's back on, you know, he was over at NBC. So he's just, you know, he's in, he's in high demand. Um, just another old um, advertisement for him. Um, just nothing he can't do singing wise. Um, you know, especially when he's in the opera. Um, this is a great old color photo of him um, on stage. I haven't seen many color photos of him, um, but this was able to track down from somebody. Um, gracious, let me, graciously let me use it. Um, and again, he's a, uh, you know, he's in the movies. He's in Sing Me a Love Song. Um, there's nothing he can't do. 1936, uh, this movie comes out. This is an old lobby card I was able to track down. Years ago, these would have been sent to theaters. 
uh, and you know either just discarded or you know you know not kept. But again, fortunately, someone kept these. I was able to track them down uh, just to show you how popular he was. Uh, Melody for two. This comes out in thirty-seven. Get another lobby card. It shows a little bit of its wear, um, but it's something that you know never meant to be kept. Just you know, it's, but I'm glad someone kept it. Um, you know, he does so many different engagements every year. I mean, again, America's favorite tenor, 101 engagements uh, just in one year alone. Um, he's he's everywhere. Uh, this is one of my favorite ads from uh, Musical America. Uh, Milton sings and America listens. So it's just one of these, you know, you know, great uh, testaments to how popular he was. Um, I found so many people that have different items over the years that they don't know who he was, but their parents or grandparents kept things. And they don't know what to do with it, so they didn't want to throw it away. So they graciously sent it to me. Um, so each piece that I find is able to find, you know, tell a, a larger story. Um, in addition uh, to the photos of the cars that I have, we started to collect a lot of his old uh, concert uh, programs uh, and other letters and things that he has. Uh, I don't, don't know if he actually signed this or not. I can't verify it. It looks like it, but uh, I just have no way to verify it. Um, this is from '47, I believe. Uh, University of Missouri, again, a signature, could be his, uh, just haven't authenticated anything yet. Um, again, another ad, you know, showing his popularity in concert, again, success in opera, uh, Lawrence Evans was his manager. Again, he was just, he's, he's everywhere. Um, another nice um, concert poster of his that, again, not meant to be kept, but someone fortunately did. I was able to track it down. Um, this one I believe is from um, Portland, Oregon. Yeah, this is 49. Again, a great shot of him, another concert poster, um, just showing how great he was, how popular he was. Um, some personal letters he's written. Um, I'm trying to track down who this uh, Percival Perkins was, a uh, letter he wrote in 41, uh, and then a response, I think it was March and then May to her. So I'm not sure if he was there uh, in you know, a concert tour or a car show or something. So I'm still researching that one. Uh, but this is the car that starts it all. Uh, this is the 1910 white. Um, in the 30s, Melton was able to acquire a twin of his uncle's 1910 white. Um, and while his automobile uh, ambition was fulfilled, he fell victim to another desire. He became an uninhibited collector and was undoubtedly top ranked. He is now today, Melton, known as uh, one of the founding fathers of the car collector hobby. Uh, in addition, we, he's, you know, he's head of the Antique Automobile Club of America for the year. Uh, and again, I know that because he sent the uh, plaque he got from it to Gus. So this is a award the AACA sent to Melton. Um, don't know, it's undated, um, but this is something that uh, he sent to Gus. Gus kept it for years. Uh, I now have it, so I've been able to scan it and, uh, and share it. So just unfortunately, it's undated. I wish I knew exactly what year it was, but I'm still researching that one. Uh, Melton really doesn't get a lot of credit. You know, he's still, uh, you know, his name is mentioned when it comes to cars. These cars come up to auction. Um, you know, if you can trace it to him, the price goes up. Um, but you know, it's just, there's, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to fathom how many cars he had and how connected he was to the automobile, uh, industry racing. Uh, this picture picture is an old slide I found. And then the notation on it says singing after the Watkins Glen crash in 52. So he's clearly there, clearly him singing. Um, I'm still trying to find out if that's right. I can't find any articles. I found articles about the crash, but not about him singing after it. So you know, was just to calm the crowd down. Um, what else did he do there? Um, there's, unfortunately, I just have a lot more questions than answers. Same thing with Gus. Unfortunately, Gus passed away in 86 and a lot of stories went with him. So I'm playing a little catch up and, you know, I might not get all the answers to it, but I enjoy, I enjoy researching to try to find out. Um, so Milton, not only did, just didn't want to put these cars on display, he wanted them driven. You know, he wanted these cars in all the working order. He wanted everyone else to have the same joy that he had while racing them. Um, this is a good friend, Lawrence Tibbet, uh, was also a Connecticut resident, another uh, opera singer as well. Um, let's see, uh, this is at his, uh, uh, Lawrence Tibbet, this is uh, the uh, program for Tibbet as well. Um, again, another opera singer that Milton was friends with. Uh, again, this is Milton racing in his Mercer. He didn't want these cars just sitting idle. He wants, he's out and about with him. He wants everyone else to be, to experience that, that, uh, that thrill he got from it. Uh, what's interesting about this car, this is the locomobile. This is uh, on the property in Weston uh, is the, the monogrammed M that he would put on the cars. It's kind of harder to see in this one, but it's on the door. Uh, this was actually done in the Bronx at Reuters Coachworks. Uh, so Melton Shear, uh, Henry Rasta Clark, they're all trying to one-up each other. 
So Melton, uh, as a one-up, he decided to monogram all the cars, um, or at least several of them. So this is one of the cars that he would have had monogrammed uh, down in the Bronx. Uh, and again, he's all over it. This is uh, uh, in somewhere in New York at a car rally. I have this photo. Um, I'm not sure exactly what rally it is. I think it's 60 or 61. I'm not exactly quite sure. Um, but again, he's out, he's in these cars, he's driving them. He's, you know, he's always look on the hunt for new cars or different cars. Um, this is at the Indianapolis 500 um, in, um, I believe it's 49. And this is a Model T Ford he's got. Um, this is, I don't think he didn't race it in the, the event, obviously, but this is something beforehand that was going on. Um, and again, this is Bridge Hampton. This is the 1908 Renault Vanderbilt Racer. Uh, we know it's Milton's car because of the, the frog license plate. He had the great vanity license plates. So here he is getting ready to race. Um, this car, I believe, is at uh, the Audrain Museum now uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, but again, he, sitting there racing the car, not just sitting around staring at it uh, at a, in the museum. Uh, great shot of, of him racing. It's a little blurry because he's going a little fast, but you can still kind of make out the frog uh, Connecticut plate uh, as, it's, as it's going. Uh, he brings the car down to uh, uh, Sebring down in Florida uh, one year. Um, again, undated on this one, but it's again the same car. Uh, another one of great, his great cars is the Green Goddess. I borrowed this picture from Margo's website, has the Mr. JM uh, license plate on front. Um, what's unique about this car is that uh, Henry, uh, Henry Ford II was intrigued by it and wanted to see it. Uh, Milton would bring this car everywhere. It's, again, this is at Watkins Glen. He's got the Mr. JM plate on it. Um, and after meeting Ford, uh, they, the, the two of them uh, have a conversation, and the next thing you know, uh, Melton gets the Ford Festival from it. So this is uh, 1951, uh, his TV show, the, aka the James Melton Show. Uh, so up and before, uh, you know, Reuters comes into to the picture. Uh, if you had an old antique or uh, vintage car, you would have taken it to Zumbach. Um, Zumbach Motors down in New York City. Um, now the story goes that Mel, uh, Gus knew some of the Zumbach people uh, Zumbach would send Gus some, uh, you know, overload work or, or, or um, work, you know, that they didn't necessarily need to do uh, or didn't want to do. So they would send it to Gus and essentially just double his, Gus's price. Well, one day, the person that went to pick up the car from Gus uh, didn't take the writer's uh, um, receipt out of the glove box. Uh, and so he, this person saw the, uh, the original bill from Gus and then the double fee for Zumbach. Uh, and decided to go directly to Gus uh, from then on. And that person was Alec Ullman. Uh, so you'll see Alec Ullman's, um, uh, his, his 1914 Mercer here. He's got his Alec Connecticut license plate on it. You see the Reuters coach works behind him. Uh, Ullman is the one who starts the Sebring, Sebring race in Florida. He knows Melton, he knows Austin Clark. Um, and so he makes an introduction to all these guys. So he, uh, they all bring their cars uh, to Gus. Um, this is a great old 51 uh, press photo from uh, Melton to Gus, signed uh, to my good friend Gus, a great guy with warm regards, Jim. So again, you know, he was both mutual uh, admiration for each, each other. Uh, Gus saved a lot of this stuff. I just wish I knew why. Was there something behind this? Is there a reason he kept this photo and not others? Um, there's another great shot uh, uh, at Eisenhower. Um, Jim, uh, Melton signs it uh, to our friend Gus Reuter from uh, Full Republicans, Christmas 1953. So again, just these you know, unique uh, items autographed uh, meant just for Gus or sent to Gus and he, he kept them. I'm glad he did. I just wish I knew there was you know, maybe an inside joke or something uh, over the years that I still don't know yet, but uh, maybe one day I, I will be able to track it down. Um, so uh, Melton begins to send Gus all the cars. Uh, one of the cars I'm most intrigued with is the Curb Dash Olds. This is like the scale model one. Uh, and we know it's Milton's because of the half license plate. So again, just don't know what he did or did he lose one of the lamps or crash it or something. Um, but not only did he have the, the Olds here, the, uh, the trailer here had a great license plate on it and it was pint. So as Milton's driving in this car around, you'll see it on the highway, you'll see it on the road and it's half pint. Just another you know, unique uh, set of license plates Melton had on these cars. Um, he would have taken this car to all different events, love driving this thing around. You see Margo in the back, again, the half license plate on it. Um, it's from the 52 edition uh, of Autosport Review from the December issue on the cover. Again, I borrowed this picture from Margo because you can see how, you know, what smaller version of it, 
uh, and it was on the, uh, the yacht Serenata, uh, and again, with the half plate on it. Um, I found this great shot uh, of Milton with the, uh, driving the car. I just don't know who's on the back of it. Wish I did. I'm trying to see, uh, research the flags. Maybe the flags will tell me where this actually is, but it's clearly him. It's a great old color slide, um, and it's something that I'm glad is in my uh, possession. Um, again, th this is him race uh, with a car show or a, a parade. Someone else is driving uh, the Curb Dash Olds. Uh, Melton's behind the wheel in the 1907 Rolls. This is his other favorite car uh, with the Xmas license plate. Um, love seeing that picture of that car everywhere. Um, he would take taken this all over. Um, it's one of the most photographed uh, cars that I've seen. Uh, it's at a lot of the different um, uh, car shows and parades. You'll see this car around. This was the one that was so big, uh, you could actually stand up in it with the, with the cover on. Uh, that's how big this car was. Um, I got a great shot of it here. I don't know what parade this is, but you'll clearly see this is the Xmas, um, the plate on here. I just don't know, is this, is this Connecticut? Is this New York? Is this somewhere else? Um, but it's clearly uh, Melton's car. Um, this one is uh, from the Glidden Tour for 52. Uh, you'll see Margo with her little uh, Confederate uh, flag hat that uh, her father made her wear every time they were south of the border. Um, and again, you'll see the Xmas plate on it. Great old color shot of the uh, the Glidden Tour from 52. Uh, and then this was a car sent down to the Bronx. So uh, I wish I knew what Gus did to it. Did he just polish it? Did he you know, have to do something to it? Repair the seats or something? Uh, you'll see it's got the Xmas plate on it. It's from 57. Uh, you'll see here on the plate, it's the year that Connecticut switched over from the, blue, uh, the white to the blue plates. Um, so it's a great, great, again, a great shot. Just wish I knew more of what Gus would have done to it. These are all the great, some of the great uh, vanity license plates Melton has over the years. Um, this is in that booklet that was sent out. Um, so he's got several, this is not by any means all of them, um, but anytime you see it, you know, instantly it was a Melton car, either at a, a show or going down the road on the, on the turnpike or something. Um, this is uh, the Rockwell handsome cab that he had a hand crank. And again, his, his JML license plate on it. Great shot of him there. Um, uh, this is the uh, white steamer uh, in Weston uh, on the property uh, at, his at his home. So he would have had, that's the JAMI uh, plate on it. Again, I love all these old Connecticut plates. Um, this is the locomobile. Um, his picture's from 42, again, the JML plate on it. Um, and if you'll see, even when the Milton Museum opens, he's got uh, the crit. So is it short for critter? Is it short for something else? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but the vanity plates are everywhere. So when the Melton Museum opens, you know, they've got several plates without, of course, without vanity plates. Um, but I know by looking at the vanity plate, I know it's, we're, we're, we're in a Melton location. Uh, this is an old International Harvester, picture from 47. Uh, again, great shot of the plate on it, uh, Melton behind the wheel. Uh, I picked this uh, picture only because it's got the squirrel. This is when he's they move, the museum moves down to uh, closes moves to Florida as they drive the cars down to Florida. You can still see the squirrel license plate. Uh, he never changes the plates, which is great. So he, you know, all the Connecticut plates are still on the car when the when the uh, autorama opens down in uh, in Florida. And he, I mean, Melton had the greatest. He had the coolest stuff. This is the Packard Panther. Uh, again, he's got the JQM plates on it. Um, You'll clearly see here, this is in Brookline, Mass, uh, at a car event. Um, the FBG, this is done at Hershey. It's got the FBGA, which I found out from Margo, it stands for Flowery Branch, Georgia. So I was curious what the, what the what those letters meant. Um, and here he is in the rolls. Um, again, unfortunately, I think maybe coughing or something, because his hands, hands behind his face. Uh, but that's clearly him behind the wheel. Now, again, no, not more context to it. Uh, I wish I knew why he was down there with it. Is he selling the car? He's, you know, he's always selling cars, buying cars. Um, the list is enormous. Uh, this picture is from the, the Autorama, but I like it because it's got the Mr. TV plate on it. Um, again, there's, he's got so many vanity plates. There's really no um, you know, complete list, which is something I'm, I'm working on. Uh, he had farm as well. Let's see here, farm, another plate. Um, don't know the history behind that, but still looking into that. Uh, and he just says, he, he gets too many cars. So here we're back in Westport. Uh, this is the garage he had uh, on the property where it just simply gets too big. He's got too many cars. Uh, he's buying some cars and people are giving him others. 
here's a great shot. This is from Life Magazine, um, where he just, you'll see all the cars. And where is he going to put all these things? There's too many to count. Um, there's not enough uh, no room for them. Um, you'll see the simplex. He's got, he's got the, the great, great old cars. Uh, another collection of cars from the handsome cab to a Buick, um, you know, the white steamer. You know, he's got the buckboard. He's got everything. Uh, this is the Cannon Corbin ball, um, Corbin Cannon ball, excuse me, 1910. You'll see his vanity plate on it uh, in Weston. Uh, this is the 1893 steam uh, stagecoach. This is the, the oldest car in the collection, um, again, in Weston. Um, the 1909 white steamer. The uh, museum put out a set, I believe it was five um, uh, postcards um, of certain automobiles. And this is one you'll see, it says Milton Museum of Antique Automobiles for Norwalk. Uh, again, the Stanley Steamer, uh, the 1915 in, uh, in Weston. Uh, again, just a sampling of more cars, everything from a Peerless to the 1911 Mercedes, Pierce Arrow, Mercer, um, White Steamer, Franklin Limousine, you name it, he's, he's probably got it. Um, this is another collection of, uh, of photos that was put out, but it's clear they're, they're at this from Weston, they're not from uh, Norwalk. Um, so again, again a, a, a semblance, you know, a, the soup to nuts of, uh, of automobiles, uh, Melton has them. Um, this would have been a private display he has, again, from the Melton booklet, showing several of the cars, um, that are just, but it's not just the cars, right? You'll see he's got, he's got toy cars, he's got paintings, he's got photographs, he's really got just an incredible collection of uh, of automobile material. Um, and here you'll see the squirrel plate is over here, but you know, again, more of these great toy cars, uh, bicycles, motorcycles, uh, paintings, just a lot of one of a, one of a kind uh, and unique items. Uh, here he is with the. Uh, Stainless steamer. I love the Gent license plate. It's another great shot. Uh, I found in an old newspaper, I mean, an old magazine over the years. Just great because it's in color. So you'll see what color the, the barn was in Westport, uh, what color the car was. This is actually, uh, the color is officially Reuter red. So again, you know, and we're keeping up with uh, uh, Ken Purdy and Austin Clark. Uh, Melton wanted a specific color for him and no one else was allowed to have. Uh, the only one who actually gets it is Purdy uh, years later. Uh, because he helped them with right wheels rolling and they were good friends. Uh, Melton lets Purdy have a car painted right or red. Um, so a couple of the cars in, uh, in Weston, the 1899 Locomobile, um, 1907 Locomobile that uh, is here in Weston, White Steamer, 1910 Steamer in Weston, uh, the Oldsmobile Limited, 1911 Oldsmobile Limited, this is also a Weston shot, uh, the 1914 Mercer in Weston, uh, and again, this is a picture of him in, in front of the, the Western garage. Just so many different Pierce Arrow over here. Uh, just so many great cars that he has um, on the property. Now, um, uh, in 41, um, uh, Melton basically testifies, agrees to give the cars to the state. I was able to track down his actual testimony from the Appropriations Committee uh, in the archives in Hartford. Uh, unfortunately, there's very little in the archives in Hartford. I would have thought basically on his stature and what he was trying to do, the state would have more. Um, unfortunately, they don't. Um, uh, but um, let's see, over the years, uh, let's see, he wants to, or is it to pick out? Uh, he was actually going to give the cars to the state. So that was the original agreement. Um, the, the plan to construct a building, um, just the back and forth between uh, the legislature and Melton. Um, I actually, uh, this is an old drawing. Melton would have brought in the testimony. He brings the drawing with him. Um, this is uh, something from an auction site. This sold uh, in I think 2009. So I apologize for the, the poor quality of the photo, but it's a it's a drawing, a, a architect's drawing of the museum. I don't know if it's accurate or not. I just can't enlarge it. It's really not a good quality photo. But I'm still on the hunt for it. Um, if I do track it down, I will let everyone know. Um, but this is something an artist, an architect's drawing I did find from um, uh, an article. Um, it was supposed to be for the $50,000 uh, that he was going to get to build a museum um, on the Merritt Parkway. Uh, this is the uh, Senate Bill 844. So uh, the building was part of, Milton Museum was part of the maintenance and educational, uh, maintenance of educational and scientific displays on the Merritt Parkway. That's what the money falls under. It's not specifically for him, it's for the Merritt Parkway. 
Um, and you'll see this is 1941. The uh, Governor Hurley signs it, we're all set to go, no problems, and then Pearl Harbor happens. So unfortunately, everything is on hold, money is deferred, uh, nothing happens. Uh, after the war, it comes up again. Um, the uh, appropriation for the educational and scientific display on the merit, um, this is dated 45, never gets to the governor's signature. Um, it just keeps uh, delaying, delaying. Milton actually winds up going down to sing for the funds for it. Just, you know, kind of a seal of approval. Uh, everything they, they think is going to happen, and it doesn't. Uh, but Melton winds up being the uh, commissioner of the Merritt Parkway in 45. Um, it's a great picture of the Mercedes he has. It's kind of hard to see, but on top of his license plate, it says Merritt Parkway Commissioner. Um, I actually got this photo from Jonathan Sierakowski, who runs Sierakowski Classic Advisors. Um, he actually grew up in Manchester, Connecticut. So he graciously forwarded me this photo uh, to use. Uh, again, he, Melton is everywhere with, uh, with, with the cars. You'll see him with the Mercedes um, at a race event. I'm not, I, I'm not sure what this one is, but he's clearly in, in the Mercedes. Um, so by 48, uh, uh, he's done, Melton's done waiting for the state. Uh, he decides he's gonna open the museum on his own. I found a great old um, advertisement for it. Um, uh, introduce your jalopy to its grandpa at the Melton Museum of Antique Autos. What a great, great slogan that one was. Uh, another uh, advertisement uh, from 48, um, a thrill to enjoy uh, bygone days live again at the museum. Uh, this is the uh, from the Bridgeport Post. Uh, the motorcade opens the Melton Museum. Um, I guess they had a, um, I guess they would have a, a long um, cavalcade of cars that would have gone down, would have said to see that would have been. To, uh, to open the museum. Um, again, for old and young alike, uh, the Milton Museum is opening. Uh, come and see the sites, everybody's talking. So here's the uh, front page of the Bridgeport Post from 48. So the museum is opening, uh, you know, dream comes true, houses his old autos. So it's a kind of a grainier picture of the, um, the newspaper, but it, you know, big things are happening. Museum openings, everything looks great. Um, I actually tracked this down from an old employee um, who worked at the museum. This was never published, um, but this is dated 48 from a Melton to go out to uh, members of the AACA, Veteran Motor Car Club of America. Uh, just to let everyone know the museum is op uh, open and operating. Some of the details here are great. How many automobiles, 55 that he's got going at the time. Um, the 1904 trolley car that's outside. Um, the different, uh, items that he's got, the French print collection. Uh, it's just some of the details on here are just, you know, invaluable. Uh, I've not seen this reprinted. I've seen other ads to the museum. I don't know if this was something that didn't run, was supposed to, ran in a different, you know, um, maybe different paragraph, something. I just haven't seen this exact um, item run. So and that's some, something to keep in mind. Uh, I did uh, track down an old, uh, kind of like Zapruder eight millimeter film. Uh, of someone's travels to the uh, Melton Museum. So this is how you would have come. You would have come into the Merit. This is the old sign heading towards uh, Norwalk on your way to the museum. Uh, this is the museum as it opens. Uh, in 48, you'll see his several of his cars around it. The uh, Stirrup Cup restaurant is on the side here. Uh, what's great, he's got the full color antique autos on top of the roof. I mean, I can't even imagine how much that costs to do that today, but let alone years ago. Um, it's actually an old converted bowling alley that you'll see, um, but just priceless, priceless uh, stuff. Uh, these are the actual um, press photos that Melton sent to Gus. Um, this is Grover Whelan uh, in the middle. He's the official New York City greeter. Um, this is Claire Luke's, Claire Luce Booth, an actress. I think that's Tibbet here on the left here. Uh, what I like about this is that it was broadcast on WNLK, which is a Norwalk radio station. I have tried to track down an old audio. I'm, it's been successful so far. I've gone to the Prelinger Institute in uh, um, New York, haven't found anything, but maybe someday something uh, will turn up. Uh, another great shot of uh, uh, the opening of the museum. The story on this goes is that Whelan forgot his uh, big scissors to cut the ribbon. So Melton winds up bringing a giant horn uh, to open the museum. But what's great about this photo is what the little boy is holding, and a museum, Melton Museum ticket. And I'm like, I'm never gonna find one of these things. Lo and behold, a couple of years ago, I found it. I found it, I believe it's from 52. 
based on the price. Um, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, so you'll see Milton Museum uh, of Antique Automobiles, Norwalk, admit one, the price, the tax, uh, just over the moon that I was able to track down an actual ticket to the museum. Uh, another great shot, this is actually, uh, this is Margot Tulin in the middle here. Um, and her father was driving. This is actually uh, as part of her honeymoon. They went uh, to uh, through Connecticut to New Jersey, and they stopped at the Milton Museum on October 48th. So just a few months after the museum opens, um, and they're driving around at the museum. Just a great you know connection uh, to to the museum. Um, I took this one from Margot as well because I was always been intrigued with what was on the property. So. You know, what was this empty space here? What, what did this billboard say? What did the sign off front look like? What did the trolley look like? What was this building in front here? Um, and it's just something that I've been obsessed with over the years. I just cropped that photo there. Um, and come to find out in the old, the Zapruder film uh, that I found, it was a sort of film, um, the, the old uh, train tracks ran around the property in that front area and the old uh, billboard uh, was for gateway real estate and insurance. Um, so not how long that stayed up there, but just incredible detail to have. Um, this is the front, this is the front view of the train that went around the side of the museum. You wanna know who's in that one. Uh, this is actually Dale and Jerry Ketchum, brother and sister, whose father took them through uh, the museum uh, and, and made the tape of them. Um, and it shows some great details. This is a shot of the, that 1904 trolley that Milton would have put in front. Um, just a great detail here. I didn't know that was there. You don't really see a lot of the photos with the uh, trolley on it. Uh, that other building in front was a dairy frost building. So, you know, a kind of ice cream treat you would have gotten after driving around. Uh, this is again, Dale and Jerry Ketchum with uh, longtime employee, Joe Ryan. Uh, imagine, you know, maybe the lawsuits nowadays with no seat belts in the car, uh, but you know, you're getting, driven around uh, at the museum. Uh, again, Joe Ryan here driving around in the front, just a neat shot of uh, life from years ago at the museum. Uh, Melton was you know, very good to his employees, especially a couple of the long time ones. Uh, he sends a, uh, a Western Union telegram to uh, Joe Ryan that uh, his widow kept that she graciously sent to me once she found out what I was doing. Um, so again, you know, nice unique piece of ephemera that, that has lasted all these years. Um, just some more shots of the museum. This is from 51, uh, people coming in and out. Um, another shot I got from uh, Joan Ryan, uh, a day in the life of uh, people coming into the museum. Uh, this is from Gus. And you'll see the, the, the cars on top, just it's a black and white instead of color. Uh, another great shot of the, uh, um, the cars. It's interesting here to note that the, the, uh, the, the cars, you used to park in front here. Um, and around the building, another shot of the interior of the Milton Museum, the Stirrup Cup restaurant on the side. Uh, but then over the years, things change. So this is a, a father and the daughters. Uh, they took a picture out front. So that, like in the previous photo, you would have parked. So is this now the photo shot? Is this now the photo place? Who knows? Looks like it's a great place to do it because you've got the museum logo in front of you uh, on the building, but who knows? Um, the museum uh, ad from 52, so you'll see it, the problem with the museum is that it's the attendance dips in the winter, so it's only open during the weekends. Uh, so this comes out in 52. Ad for the Stirrup Cup restaurant that is attached to it. Uh, I was able to actually to track down the uh, actual um, rest the menu for the Stirrup Cup restaurant. So this is dated uh, December 52. Um, again, it shows the prices on some of the stuff, uh, clam chowder, some of the, the great items, uh, the a la carte option, still like the Rheingold beer, beer option on the bottom. So that's Again, just another unique thing that puts it into perspective. Um, these are some pictures of people on the trolley. Again, another photo op, um, if you would have gone to the museum. Don't know who these people are, unfortunately, um, but great pictures of the trolley. Again, you'll see the Gary Twist building here, um, other people on the trolley. Um, Milton's the only one I know that uh, he, he doesn't add for Schaefer beer and he gets, he puts the, puts the car, puts the museum in it. Uh, I've seen other ads for Schaefer over the years, only one. Uh, to, to, you know, hype himself in the car is, is Melton. He has a crop of that. Uh, so stop into the museum. It's just unheard of today if you were going to do advertising, promote your own museum. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, how popular or powerful he was. Um, again, I picked this shot from Margot. Um, 
because of the Have You Seen Milt Museum kind of bumper stickers that are on the front. Um, I saw one of these, you know, a decade ago. I never thought I'd see another one. It was something that was actually put on the car by the staff, never meant to last. Well, lo and behold, um, I found one. And it comes from a couple here in Maine um, that, that went on their first date to the Milton Museum in 1950. And they kept this thing, they've kept it for all these years. They couldn't tell me why they kept it, but they have it. And this is the, their uh, uh, Model A that they went uh, to the Milton Museum in, Jim and Grace McBride. They still live in Reading, Connecticut. They're still with us. Uh, this is them today. They still have the Model A. And they were gracious enough to keep that uh, Milton Museum bumper sticker, give it to me. Um, and it's just, again, it's all these great stories that I'm able to put together. Uh, another fascinating piece of history connected to Melton. Uh, again, it's just a sampling of some of the cars you would have had at the museum. This is from the booklet. Again, not, not in by a long shot, all of them. Um, some of the shots of the interior of the museum that Gus saved. This is the Canard uh, Labasser 1901. Uh, presented to the Milton Museum. Sometimes the signs would give you more information uh, on the car. Sometimes it wouldn't. Um, this is the uh, Gardner Sir Poulet, uh, an interesting looking car. Uh, undated, uh, what photo this is in the museum, but I think it might be earlier just because of the way the, the museum is set up. Just a guess. Um, uh, I love in the 1911 Oldsmobile, you can see that the first license plate, F-U-S-T. Um, again, you'll see that the it gets a converted bowling alley. So it's not, you know, there's not all these bells and whistles yet. Some of it comes later. Um, this is the white steamer behind here, but it's clearly at the museum. Um, this is Jumbo. Uh, this is the big fire engine. Uh, this is Melton and Lawrence Evans, his, his agent inside the museum. Sure, the space is kind of tight here at the ceiling. Um, other pictures of the handsome cab with that monogrammed M on it. Uh, the Mercer and the Rolls Royce inside the museum. This is part of the postcard set. That um, that he that 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 had gone out. Uh, just a couple of before and after photos. This is the 1904 Franklin in the Bronx uh, when Gus has it, and then this is it. Go directly to the museum. So the, I I don't have like a, a specific invoice record because uh, Gus didn't keep the best records. But when your your clients are Melton, Austin Clark, Dr. Shear, you didn't need them because Gus was never not busy. Uh, always work to be done, always had cars coming in. This is the great 1933 uh, Chrysler Imperial. I can't read out what the, 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 the vanity plate is, uh, but this is Gus working out in the Bronx. And this is a picture of it on one of the postcards in the, in Florida. It's got the Tune license plate, T-U-N-E. So a great shot of, uh, of that car. Uh, this is the uh, 1908 Packard Modern Roadster 30, Roadster 30, excuse me. I believe this car is also at Audrain uh, Museum in Newport now. Um, but this is Gus with it, the car, uh, and this is when he's done with it. Again, painted right or red. Um, the shot is from um, the Autorama, but just to give you the color shot of it. The stainless steamer, also painted right or red. Um, this is the, uh, the Packard, uh, the Pierce Packard, so the Pierce Aero body uh, on the uh, Packard chassis. Um, this is what the car looked like when Gus got it. It was gifted to Melton in this shape, uh, and then when Gus is done with it, you know, Milton winds up giving, giving it uh, to his wife, so she's got the Mrs. Milton plate on it. Again, the detail on this thing, everything's correct. Gus does a fantastic job. Um, this is the 1905 white steamer. Um, this is the one that uh, is in horrible shape. Um, it says, while in Chicago on a concert tour, Milton got a letter from a woman in Michigan. She described an ancient white limousine in her possession. Uh, the tenor yearned for it, and after a pleasant negotiation, bought it. It says the car, however, was so woefully, uh, woefully battered, worn by exposure and torn um, that Melton himself called it a basket case. It says, nonetheless, he shipped it to Gus Reiter, an artis artisan whose specialty is restoration of antique automobiles. Uh, he, uh, Reiter labored to recreate the old time glory of the white. He re Gus rebuilt the body, painted it, upholstered the interior with a lush cream white leather and a flowery rug floor. And the result is this. So you'll see the, the flowery rug floor, the cream white interior. Uh, he just does a fantastic job with it. So no wonder Milton is sending everything to Gus. Um, a couple other uh, Milton cars, uh, the locomobile down in the Bronx. Uh, this is the foreign hand pony coach down in the Bronx. Um, again, not sure what exactly he did to it, but it didn't go there just for photos. It was down there to have work done on it. Uh, Milton's always trying to sell the cars. So th again, there's not a definitive list of what he has, what he, what he doesn't. Um, this is a 1950 letter to someone in Minnesota, and you'll see he even writes, 
uh, Melton does on the uh, 1903 car, fully restored by Reuter. So he thinks so much of his work, he's even putting it on the letters he's sending out to people. Not every car is displayed at the museum, but he's putting it on there. Um, Gus even try, uh, Melton even tries to get Gus to move to Florida with him, uh, has no luck. Uh, this is from Auto Trim Magazine in 53, um, the story about him trying to get Gus to move. Um, but it made, Melton makes quite an impression on Gus. Uh, th this is the photo of the original book that, that I had in the beginning, still has the original tassel on it. Uh, it's signed by Melton. Gus loves this thing so much that when they moved from the Bronx to Connecticut to Ridgefield, he still has it hanging in his office. This picture, I believe, is from 84. So you'll see he still has it hanging. He doesn't just put it in the, uh, the closet somewhere or in a drawer. He has it hanging. So potential customers will, will continue to see it all those years later. Uh, this is a front shot of the sign for the museum at the Stirrup Cup restaurant. What's interesting to note is the lunch sign on the left and the dinner sign on the right. And then as well, it looks like it's lit up here, the car on top. Um, it says Stirrup Cup restaurant from the bottom. It's a little blurry, but it says James Milton Museum. Uh, and, auto, and of antique automobiles. Um, the sign does change over the years. Uh, you see that the lights are gone, the lunch and dinner sign is gone, and it now changes to dancing every Saturday. Um, the strip cup stays the same. It's a great color shot of it from the film. Uh, again, one of my favorite cut pictures because it just shows you how, the, how it was painted. It's two-tone here, it looks like, um, not just black and white. Um, like a fan of family at the museum, just don't have names. I wish I had names for some of these people on it. Um, but again, it gives, gives great detail of what that sign was in the front of the of the uh, museum. I believe this picture is from 52 because it says the museum on the top and stirrup cup on the roof. Uh, it also has the hours, um, Milton Museum entrance hours here, which it doesn't uh, in, uh, in earlier years. Uh, again, great family picture, just knew who the family was. Uh, pictures that I was able to locate as undated. Um, and I believe it's from 52 based on an old uh, ad from Saturday Evening Post. Again, this is for pure later than Melton's doing, uh, but you'll see here, he puts the museum in the ad. Uh, so Melton Museum of Norwalk, Connecticut, and you'll see up top, it says Melton Museum Stirrup, Stirrup Cup. So it leads me to believe it's from, it's from later on um, rather than earlier when the museum opens. Uh, now this is a unique item. This is an actual, uh, uh, shirt worn by an employee, Buzz Bellafleur, uh, at the museum. Uh, he loved his, this job so much. He wanted to become a successful architect, I think, but revered working at the uh, museum. Uh, so much so that he kept this shirt. Uh, I was able to track down his son who lives up here in Maine. Uh, he graciously turned it over to me. I've been able to scan it. Uh, it's just a, such a unique piece. Um, it, cl it, cl it clearly shows what would have been worn. Uh, what the logo looked like uh, for the museum. Uh, just a unique piece of history. Uh, my, my, my jaw hit the floor when I saw this thing. Um, you'll see this is jo uh, another employee, long-term employee, Joe Ryan. You'll see he's actually wearing the shirt, Milton Museum here. I got this from uh, his widow. And you'll see it also has the, uh, have you seen Milton Museum little bumper sticker on it? So I think this might've been from years ago, but still trying to track down where this is, who's with them. Again, more questions than answers. Um, in addition to the cars, Melton had motorcycles. And we know this, uh, this is a 1950 Harley Davidson that Buzz Bellafleur, the former employee, actually bought from Melton. And again, he revered Melton so much, kept the check. So years ago, you would have, when you, when you uh, uh, got the canceled check, you got it back from the bank. Well, Buzz bought the 1915 Harley from Melton for 50 bucks and 57. And he got it back and it has Melton's endorsement on it. So he's kept this, uh, kept the check, the son had it. And again, it's just, it's a small little ephemera piece that tells a bigger story. Um, it's another piece to add. And then this is the Harley Davidson after it's been restored uh, up here in Maine. Um, let's see. I go forward here. I go too far. Just give me a second. Oh, that's not right. Did I skip some pictures here? Huh, I'm sorry. Thought I skipped something. Yes, I didn't. Um, so uh, unfortunately, uh, in 53, the uh, museum closes. Um, again, due to lack of attendance, uh, it's moved down to um, uh, Hypoluxo, Florida. Um, it's an 11-acre property uh, that was once the Lakeshore Casino. 
uh, and built as the uh, Reinhardt home. Uh, it is patterned after Beauvoir, uh, the stately uh, residence of Jefferson Davis in Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, so you'll see the detail on this uh, when the, the auto when it's the museum closes and moved to the autorama. Again, another front marquee that's the famous shot of the uh, autorama entrance. Um, one of my favorite photos of Melton, uh, this is him in Ohio. I'm not sure exactly the year, but I love how the car silhouettes him. Uh, it's just kind of the perfect, uh, you know, uh, representation of who he is and who he was. Uh, again, as big of a carnet as there is, uh, you'll find uh, no equal. Um, again, unfortunately, when he uh, dies in 61, he's only 57. Uh, a lot of the stuff is scattered. Uh, a lot of the, uh, the cars, um, even today, I uh, the, the, the Rainier that's at the Stahl Museum out in uh, Michigan uh, still has the Melton M on it, but they have no idea why. They did not know that it's it's the, the M stood for Melton. So uh, it's just, again, a unique piece that, you know, I'm able to track down the history of related to Melton, related to where the car was in the museum. Um, again, unfortunately, the Autorama then closes in 61, shortly after Melton uh, passes away. Um, and then the building is raised in 66. Uh, and then we're kind of, I'm left picking up the pieces. Um, but it's been a fun adventure. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to leave everyone with um, a video, a, a PowerPoint that I've created. Um, what I'd like you to keep in mind in this is look for the Rainier, um, look for the, uh, the monogram M on some of the cars, look for the Buy Auto Go, look for Jumbo, um, look for the Canon Corbin Ball, the 33 Chrysler, see what you can pick out, the four in hand pony coach. So without further ado, let's uh, enjoy.
I hope everyone enjoyed. This was wonderful, John. Uh, did, did, the, did the sound come so through? Much. No, it didn't. Oh, sorry about that. I had a song with it, and for some reason, I didn't. I just didn't click it. Sorry. No problem. Uh, the, the photos were wonderful, so I think we all enjoyed uh, watching um, and seeing these wonderfully restored uh, automobiles. Uh, so, uh, everyone, if you have questions, please put them in the chat. Um, and we already have a couple, John. You know we would, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, one of the questions, and I was thinking the same thing. Uh, when he died, how was the collection dispersed? How you know where did it go? Who decided on you know where you know who to sell it to? What to do with them? Because there was a lot, a lot of uh, automobiles. Yeah, the, uh, went to uh, went through Rockefeller. Uh, the collection was sold down. Uh, he opened. Uh, um, the collection down in Arkansas, most of the cars went there. And then from there, they were sold uh, off to Harris and others over the years. And it's been, you know, it's kind of a free for all after that. Okay. Okay. That's why you're, you're tracking them down right now. <laughs> See what happens. Yeah, I'm kind of, some of them I do before <laughs> and after uh, some, you know, some are still in Connecticut, some are others, some are in museums, some have been painted, some have been moved around again. Okay. Um, here's another Doug uh, Zumbach of Zumbach's Coffee Shop in New Canaan sponsors antique car shows called Caffeine and Carburetors about two to three times annually. Is he related to the uh, Zumbach dealer picture earlier in your presentation? Uh, could be. I wouldn't know uh, the genealogy, but uh, Zumbach was the big uh, restorer down in New York um, that did all the cars for years. So, I mean, there was right next to. Uh, Shinetti and Ferrari uh, down in New York City, so uh, could be. Okay. Um, as you said, who got most of the cars? It was the Rockefellers? Winthrop, yeah. Down okay. in, uh, opened the museum down in Arkansas. Oh, great. Um, somebody saw some of the melting cars in Las Vegas several years ago. Um, uh, didn't Melton keep some of the cars as Sagatuck Grain in Westport? Do you know? Or uh, does anybody else? That. Okay. Um, are there any pictures of his electric car? Did he have one? Um, there's a couple of, I have a couple of electric car pictures uh, when they're in the Autorama down in Florida. Okay. Do you know how many of his cars still exist? Uh, not the number, because again, you know, does a car, uh, do, just because he had the car and then we sold it, does that mean it's his? <laughs> they have to be yeah, on display. Right. <laughs> like, like you saw that list that I showed you, he was, he had so many cars, he was trying to sell these things almost as soon as he got them. So th there's really no definitive list, but uh, a, a lot, yes, still do it. <laughs> All right. So there's been a back and forth about the, the property that the museum was located on uh, was eventually sold to Caldor uh, Bennett's in the 1950s. The store's built there on Route 7 on Main Street. So that's what happened to it eventually. I think it's now the, the Walmart is there on Route 7. Yep, yep, yeah. absolutely. Um, let's see, Dr. Samuel Scher also acquired several of Melton's autos. Uh, Gus restored several of them for the doctor. So, yeah, I got several. I got. I have a whole collection of uh, Shear cars, uh, a folder of that uh, with Shear's license plates on them. Yeah. Oh, so you know all about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's great. Uh, if anybody else has any other questions, put them in the chat. Uh, this has been a wonderful um, uh, program and lecture. And knowing about Melton, I did. You know, you said he was a tenor. He was very famous. But you going through that in the beginning, it's like he really was famous. He was everywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's, I mean, he's in the World's Fair. He's, you know, it's, it's it, people, he, radio was king back then. So he's got the radio program. He's singing nationally. People would just come in and give him cars, ha have him buy them, take a look at them. Uh, they were just giving them to him. Like that one, the, uh, that, the, uh, the Air, Pierce Arrow Packard one. They, they gifted right. it to him. Dr. Gordon right. Norwell gifted it to him. That it's it's wonderful. Um, someone's mentioning that in Weston there was a guy who restored Packards and Dusenbergs too. So yeah, Jim Ho. Uh, see, you know who it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, because yep. that, that's the thing. Most of the Dusenbergs that are on the road, Ho restored and Gus painted. So ah. it's a, it's a, they worked in 
tandem. It worked well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Someone says there was a Stanley steamer in the basement of the Wire Mill Inn in Georgetown. Uh, was it from the Melton Collection? Do I'm not know? familiar with that one. I'd have to look that okay. one. Okay. Yep. Uh, did they have a search mount in the collection made by Edward Beach Gallagher, who designed 11 early cars in 1904? Um Gallagher lived from 1910 to 1953, a mile from the museum. Um, have you come across any information on Edward Gallagher? No, unfortunately, because again, Gus didn't keep the best records. So uh, a lot of this, like, I have a lot of photos. I don't have a lot of paperwork. Uh, yep. Again, because I, I've actually tracked down old paperwork from former uh, clients that, you know, it's their sons and daughters now have the cars and they kept the receipts from Gus. So I actually have them through the, the former uh, children <laughs> and stuff of, of the owners of the cars. Oh, wow. That's uh, uh, interesting. So the Gallagher Mansion is it's in Cranberry Court in, in Norwalk. So that has been um, restored and um, it is uh, very active uh, being used. Maybe we'll find something out as uh, as they continue to do research on the Gallagher Mansion. Um, I think that's the end of our talk. Thank you, John. Thank you to our audience. Uh, this has been wonderful. This has been great. Um, so we're going to be ending this. I just want to make a, a couple announcements uh, with our next talk. And what's well, actually, we're doing it in person uh, at uh, Mill Hill Historic Park. Uh, on May 21st, we're going to have uh, the life and times of William Webb. It's an African-American Civil War soldier from Connecticut. So uh, that will be on Saturday, May 21st at 2 p.m. at Mill Hill at 2 East Wall Street. Um, you will be getting um, information on, on that. Um, and I wanna turn it over to Weston um, for any um, upcoming events. Thank you. Yes, John, thank you so much. Uh, we did have a couple of uh, comments I wanted to mention. So Karen Gianetti mentioned that she actually got to ride in the Surrey with the fringe on top when she was a kid. Uh, I believe she was very good friends with Margot. And so um, she's she, uh, Karen still lives in Weston. And she was telling me the great story of her getting to ride with James Melton and Margot um, in the uh, in the Surrey with the fringe on top. So I have pictures I of that car, but it's at the Autorama, not in Norway. <laughs> and it's in color too, so. Oh my God, that's yeah. awesome. I have a whole um, other then, section of Autorama photos and uh, dealings with that. So it's, it, I've separated the two. It was one, now I've got two different projects going. Excellent. Yeah, you have a lot of projects going on there. That sounds, <laughs> that's great. Um, and then someone early on mentioned that um, the Seal Cove Auto Museum um, they display two of Melton's automobiles. So I guess if, if people are curious about uh, actually seeing a Melton car in person, they can go to the Seal Cove Auto Museum. Um, yeah, that's the Pierce so Arrow. It still has the restored by Roberto tag. I actually met with Roberto years ago. My father and I went up to the museum, uh, but we had to be back. We had to clear Massachusetts by 11 because they were taking the tolls down on the pike. So we left Connecticut at like, you know, 2 a.m. to be up there, have a great visit with him, see the cars, and then be back by, you know, we get, of course we made it by 10, but it was one of those, it was great, yeah, I'm glad we did it. But yeah, that's up there. Excellent, excellent. Um, well, thank you so much. And for Weston, um, our next big event is the kickoff to our Music at the Barn Outdoor Summer Concert Series. Uh, so that begins on Sunday, June 5th at 5.30 p.m with the band Logical Pretzel playing the hits of Steely Dan. Uh, so that takes place um, beginning of June. So come join us outside at the Weston Historical Society for our outdoor concert summer series. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Um, and John, thank you again. And the recording will be available. It'll be emailed out to everyone and available on both organizations' websites and YouTube pages. So everyone have a great night. Um, and John, if anyone has any further questions, is there a way to reach out to you or should they kind of contact us and 
and we can reach out to you on behalf of them. Yeah, if you want, if you want to share any of my contact info, if you search um, John O'Leary University of Hartford, my uh, my profile will come up. It doesn't have my Gmail, but it has my Hartford email. So um, there's a couple. Of, I think that's a couple of best way to get a hold of me. Um, okay. I've got a couple of different things. If you search online, I should come up. So yeah, so we'll include it in the email um, afterwards, so everybody who's on will get it. Sure. Yeah, I can send you my LinkedIn thing, my profile, mm -hmm. if that's easier, because it's got all my contacts yep. on there. Absolutely. So thank you again, John. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it.